Hay is one of the most expensive parts of livestock, brutal in drought years. If you want to replace 25 to 50 percent of winter hay, you don't plant a few trees. You build a tree hay system, a managed forage layer that yields one to six tons of high protein feed, acre, year, with no fertilizer and no purchased protein. The targets we are replacing are specific. Alfalfa pellets, soy-based dairy rotation, protein tubs and blocks. On most mixed herbs that's $150 to $350 per head each winter, just for protein. This works because leaf protein peaks when pasture protein collapses in midsummer. A tree hay system works because species do different jobs. Each tier is chosen for growth rate, regrowth timing, and lignin structure so protein peaks are staggered across the season. Plus, of course, biodiversity benefits. Mulberry and hybrid willow both push rapid vegetative growth with a high leaf to wood ratio. Their crude protein peaks just after the summer solstice, when pasture protein has already declined. This tier is cut every year, usually once, sometimes twice, in high moisture climates. The output here is leaf and small branch fodder with digestibility comparable to high quality alfalfa. This is your primary winter protein source, but black locust and linden are not cut annually. They are managed as pollards on a two to three year cycle, which keeps biomass accessible and prevents shading out of the pasture below. Their role is structural. Shade cuts heat, so animals graze longer and DMI stays up. Condensed tannins from black locust improve protein utilization efficiency and reduce internal parasite load. This tier extends the grazing season by maintaining cooler microclimates and higher pasture persistence when heat would normally stall forage growth. Poplar, chestnut, and persimmon are planted for canopy, water redistribution, and drought buffering. They're cut on a much larger rotation, five to 10 years, depending on precipitation and soil depth. Their value is not short-term protein. They are the water engine of the system. Deep roots lift subsoil moisture, condensation forms under canopy at night, and soil organic matter increases as leaf litter is mineralized in place. This stabilizes the entire pasture system in dry years and improves regrowth rates of both tier one and your base pasture layer. Early summer, pasture protein is high. Midsummer, tier one flush is harvested when pasture protein drops. Late summer, tier two pollards introduce tannins, shade for extended grazing. Winter, store tier one leaf fodder replaces purchased protein inputs. Every year, tier three silently increases water retention and soil carbon, raising the ceiling of the whole system. The entire performance of a tree hay system depends on carbohydrate allocation timing, not the species. Misalignment between reserve cycling and cut interval is why most leaf fed experiments collapse after the first year. Spring, reverse rebuilding phase. During early shoot expansion, roughly 60 to 70% of the tree's metabolic demand is supplied by stored root and stem carbohydrates, not current photosynthesis. Cutting now depletes the starch bank before it's replenished, delaying recovery and predisposing stems to die back. The correct action is restraint. Use spring for grazing grass, not trees. Let the cambium thicken. Carbohydrates reserves recover and xylem flow normalize. Midsummer, peak nitrogen fixation and carbohydrate plateau. Around three to four weeks after the solstice, leaf nitrogen begins to stabilize while photosynthetic output exceeds respiratory demand. Root reserves are fully restored and non-structural carbohydrates in the leaves have peaked. This is the physiological window for tier one coppicing, mulberry, willow, or poplar. Cutting at this point captures the highest crude protein, lignin ratio with CP commonly 20 to 28%, and NDF below 35%. Delay past this point and the leaves lignify, dropping digestibility by as much as 20%. Coppice heights should remain above two latent buds per stool to ensure rapid resprouting. Late summer, secondary metabolite phase. As day length shortens, leaf crude protein declines, but secondary metabolites concentrate. Black locust accumulates condensed tannins and willow increases salicylates and phenolytic glycosides. Pollarding now, rather than full coppicing, removes the active canopy without collapsing the photosynthetic base. The tannins bind soluble proteins in the rumen, lowering degradability and improving nitrogen use efficiency. They also suppress nematode egg viability, reducing parasite cycling precisely when larval load is highest in pasture soils. The accompanying partial shade reduces canopy temperature by 3 to 6 degrees Celsius, extending grazing hours and maintaining DMI levels. 
Autumn to Winter, Reserve Utilization Phase. By autumn, starch is relocating to the roots and any new cut would reduce overwinter survival. This is when the stored midsummer material is used. Leaf wands and branch fodder retain 60 to 70 percent of their original protein when air dried under 30 to 35 degrees Celsius conditions. Fed with lower protein grass hay, 8 to 10 percent CP, the blended ration maintains the target 12 to 14 percent CP winter diet without purchased supplements. Mineral ash, particularly calcium and potassium, remains high, correcting the inverse calcium to potassium ratios typical of cereal haze. This system works because each harvest coincides with a distinct physiological transition, reserve drawdown, reserve surplus, metabolite accumulation, and dormancy. A every cut is anchored in plant carbohydrate and nitrogen flux, not the calendar. Coppice Mulberry, Tier 1 Protein Engine. In well-established stands, 3 plus years, mulberry will produce 4,500 to 14,000 pounds of dry matter per acre per year, depending on rainfall and coppice height management. Crude protein routinely measures 18 to 28 percent with rumen bypass fractions comparable to high leaf alfalfa, equivalent to replacing 2 to 12 bales of alfalfa depending on rainfall. Willow coppice, tier 1b seasonal buffer. Willow yields 1,800 to 5,000 pounds dry matter per acre per year on a two cut cycle in humid climates, one cut in arid climates. Leaf CP ranges 12 to 18 percent. Metabolizable energy is lower than mulberry, but salicylate concentration reduces inflammation and heat stress, which directly raises DMI and winter body condition scores. Converted to protein, 216 to 900 pounds CP per acre per year. This volume is equivalent to replacing roughly 6 to 18 protein tubs per acre per year, depending on tub formulation. Black Locust Pollard, Tier 2 Tannin Managed Protein. Pollards managed on a two to three year rotation yield 300 to 1600 pounds DM per acre per year in leaf and tender stem material. Protein levels consistently sit 22 to 28% with condensed tannins that increase nitrogen utilization efficiency by reducing rumen ammonia volatilization. Protein output, 66 to 448 pounds CP per acre per year. Because of the tannin effect, the effective protein value is closer to soy hulls or roasted soy not raw CP percentage alone. Economically, this replaces soy-based dairy or finished pellets at $420 to $680 per ton, not by matching tonnage, but by improving protein efficiency inside the cow. The core planting ratio. To replace the protein imported in two to six round bales of alfalfa, the system requires 0.6 to two acres of well-established mulberry coppice or one acre mulberry plus one acre willow or mulberry integrate into existing pasture with locust pollards as the tannin control layer. This is not a forage volume plan. It is a digestible crude protein replacement model tied to leaf to wood ratio, regrowth rate, and intake efficiency. Tools matter here because tree hay fails when labor per pound of protein is too high. The system must extract maximum leaf mass with minimal handling and preserve protein without excessive oxidation. Cutting. A telescoping powerhead pole saw allows you to cut at 2 to 2.7 meters, which is the physiological pollard band where regrowth buds are most active. Cutting below this band shifts growth to basal shoots, less efficient leaf mass per year. The principle is not the saw model, it's maintaining the pollard shelf, a living protein factory at chest to head height. A high kerf Japanese pole saw is for finished trimming. Clean cuts prevent cambium tearing, which prevents wound desiccation and accelerates shoot initiation. A ragged cut costs you next year's tonnage. Chipping and leaf pelleting. Optional. Strategic. An electric chipper is not for making mulch. It's for separating leaf from stem. When the feeding goal is to create leaf meal concentrate for winter rationing, leaf material can be hammer milled into a meal or crumble, which maintains high bypass protein fraction, stable selenium, calcium, and potassium, reduced bulk, meaning easier densification for winter storage, pelleted leaf meal function as a direct substitute for soy pellet top dress, a ration balancer for low CP hay, a controlled protein dose for later term gestation or lactation. This is the precision feeding layer most people never reach. Drying and curing. Cattle panel racks curved over two cinder blocks create high surface airflow without heat stress. The sun drying drives polyphenol oxidase and denatures soluble proteins, dropping CP and digestibility. 
Shade drying retains 10 to 27% more crude protein and preserves 10 protein complexes that improve nitrogen retention in the rumen. In humid climates, airflow matters more than temperature. Target 30 to 35 degrees Celsius air temp with movement, not direct heat. Anything above 45 degrees Celsius drives leaf brittleness and loses during storage. Feeding modalities matching form to purpose. Fresh brows relate summer parasite and stress control. Fresh cut willow and locust leaves express. Salicylates, anti-inflammatory. Condensed tannins, reduce rumen ammonia escape and reduce parasite fecundity. This is strategically fed during high parasite pressure windows, not winter. Bundle branch hay, winter slow feed protein base. Branches are tied and hung to dry, then fed whole. Animals self-regulate intake. It delivers slow release protein with no ration balancing required. Hammer mill leaf meal, precision winter supplement. Leaf meal is mixed into grain free or low grain winter rations when animals are in late gestation, lactation drive increases protein demand. Condition needs to be lifted without grain spikes. The key is predictability. Leaf meal has consistent CP and mineral concentrations across storage, unlike hay. This is where the system transitions from concept to operational autonomy, not just replacing nutrition, replacing dependence. The performance advantage of a tree hay system is not philosophical. It shows up in measurable physiological and ecological shifts. Parasite suppression. Willow and black locust leaves contain salicylates and condensed tannins, which alter rumen nitrogen metabolism and directly disrupt the reproductive cycle of gastrointestinal nematodes. Control grazing trails in sheep and goats show 30 to 60% reductions in fecal egg counts and an extension of the interval between required deworming. The benefit is twofold. Fewer clinical parasite events and less anthelmintic resistance pressure in the herd. E stress and intake efficiency. Shade from properly spaced pollard reduces canopy adjacent temperatures by 3 to 7% Celsius, depending on humidity. This is not about comfort, it's about dry matter intake persistence. Cattle and small ruminants under mild heat stress will drop DMI by 8 to 18%. Under moderated microclimate conditions, they maintain intake closer to spring levels. This is the mechanism by which farms see better weight gain in July and August when performance normally stalls or reverses. Pasture recovery and forage utilization. Tree spacing that allows dappled light increases soil moisture retention and slows evapotranspiration. The effect is not trees feed grass, the effect is grass stops shutting down midsummer. Across temperature regions, silvo pasture consistently produces plus 8% to plus 15% higher forage utilization because animals keep grazing during hours they would normally stand in heat. Nutrient retention and soil carbon trajectory. Imported hay is exported fertility. Every bale fed is nutrients that leave someone else's farm and are redistributed unevenly, often concentrating around shade or water points. Tree protein systems reverse the direction of nutrient flow. The animals eat where the trees grow, the manure falls where the protein was grown, soil organic matter rises not because of carbon from leaves, but because of nutrient cycling being contained within the same ecological unit. This is why farms using tree hay typically see OM continue increasing past the 3-5% regenerative plateau that many grass-only systems hit. The 30-Day Implementation Blueprint This is not a long establishment phase. You are not building an orchid you are restructuring how sunlight is converted into protein. Week 1. Site selection. No planting yet. Walk your pastures and identify where production collapses first in midsummer. It will be one of these patterns. Shallow soils that lose moisture early, south-facing slopes that overheat, zones of historical compaction or low organic matter. These are the areas where a vertical forage layer has the highest return because the limiting factor is not fertility, it is heat and moisture stress. We too establish tier structure, not tree rows. Spacing is functional, not aesthetic. Tier 1, mulberry, willow, goes where you want protein reserves. Spacing, 2 to 3 meters between stools and a line. Tier 2, black locust, linden, goes where animals already choose to stand during heat because shade placement controls grazing pattern. Spacing, 4 to 6 meters between pollards. You are not planting patches, you are building grazing influence lines, structures that shape where the herd spends time. Week 3. Protect the regrowth engine. The most common failure point 
is unguided browsing during establishment. The solution is not fencing trees out forever, it is controlled access. Install two strands of poly wire to create grazing lanes. The purpose is to let animals eat under shade but not destroy the regrowth points. The herd should be able to move around the tree lines, but not through the regrowth nodes. Week 4. Initiate the regrowth cycle. Light training cut. Do not take a production harvest the first year. You are conditioning the tree's architecture. Make a light coppice cut on tier 1 species to signal. Bud break at the pollard shelf. High density shoot formation. Future leaf to wood ratio optimization. Uh, this establishes how the tree will behave for the next decade. The first cut is not about biomass, it is about programming regrowth geometry. Once the pollard buds respond, the system is locked in. From that point, an annual protein production is repeatable. That's the framework. Timing, regrowth architecture, and protein capture. Not more acres, not more inputs to build a more resilient system, and one that's healthier for the animals. If you're already experimenting with tree fodder in any form, add what worked and what didn't in the comments. What challenges have you had along the way? The more real-world detail we compare, the better this system gets for everyone watching. See you next time.